Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I bless you all once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Here is your usual host and always your usual host, Mrs. Evangelist Egoma. They met somebody. Quickly, I want to give a word of exhortation, which I titled, Yielding Yourself Fully to the Principles of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Yielding Yourself Fully to the Principles of God. But before we go for the Word of God, let us pray. Everlasting King of King, Eternal Rock of Ages, the God of my ancestors, the God of Yah, Amen, the Omnipotent God, the Omnipresent God, the Omniscience God, my Lord and my Savior, your word is about to come once again. I say, breath of your word. Use your word. Let as many that are listening to the sound of my voice now be quickened by the power of your word that you are going to speak through me to them. Father, as they hear this one word of God, let there be a turn around in their life, let their life never be the same again. Every spirit of devourer that will make this one word not to make meaning in the life of your children that are listening right now. Father, we bind such a thing and a spirit in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord, and have your way. Take absolute control. As I'm speaking now, use me to speak the truth to them. So that the end, all the glory and adoration will be given to you, God Almighty, Lord, there in heaven, in Jesus Almighty name. I have prayed. Amen. If you ask all over the world, wherever you are watching me from, this is your usual host, as I initially said. I want to start from where I continue from where I stopped last time. Though I gave this title another, you know, topic, which I said, yielding yourself fully to the principles of God. I'm still going to continue where I stopped last time in using the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Amen, somebody. The Holy Spirit wants me to lay more emphasis, giving more examples concerning this scripture. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Quickly, let us start. Continue from where we stopped last time that Jesus gave a parable concerning the sower. Amen. I believe as a Bible student, we all know this story very well. When Jesus was together with his disciples and the multitude, the Bible says he gave a parable. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me read it a little bit. I know you already know it. Last time, if you have not watched the exhortation I've given last time concerning the topic which I titled, Child of God, how are you serving your God? I use the example of the book of Uzziah, chapter 4, from verses 1 to 6, how God used prophet Uzziah to go and tell the children of his days that his presence will leave them since they don't want to apply the knowledge of God. Amen. These were the choosing one, the choosing people of God that God have ordained as a priest, as a leader, as a children, you know. But instead of them to stand and be applying the, 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 the knowledge of God, they started applying the worldly knowledge. Amen, somebody. And God used Prophet Uzziah to go and tell them that if they refuse to apply his knowledge, he will also depart from their presence. Amen, somebody. And I pray as you are hearing this one word of God. Amen, somebody. The presence of God will continue to be with you so that you can use it. Apply them in your daily activities through his wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Here in this book of Matthew chapter 13, we can see vividly that Jesus gave a parable. He said that same day Jesus left and went to the lakeside where he sat down to teach. The crowd gathered around him and was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it. While the crowd stood on the shore, he used parable to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went out to sow a corn. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path, and the bird came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky ground, and where was little soil, the seed soon sprout, sprouted, because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burned the young plants, and because the root had no ground deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among the thorns bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. But some seed fell in the soil, and plant produced corn. Some produced a hundredfold grain, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. Hallelujah! And Jesus concluded, listing them if you have ears. Amen. 
if you have not watched the listening to the part a as i initially said you have to go and start from there so that you have a full understanding last time when we treat this topic this very passage in matthew chapter 13 concerning the parable of the sower jesus illustrated here because i wrote a quotation here because of time factor when you read from verses verses 4 you will see the parable but if you go to 18 and 19 concerning those the parable of a man that saw a seed that fell on the path the, the 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 meaning when jesus was interpreting it is here in the verses 18 and 19 he said those belong to the group of people you know that hear the word of god and they they did not understand it he said because they did not understand that means they did not give their heart to that word for the word to come in then remember the book of proverbs chapter 23 20 verse 26 says my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways amen somebody here we can see vividly that jesus gave the meaning of this parable of those that fell on the path he said in referring to the brethren a child of god that he heard the word of god he did not give his heart to the world to come inside so immediately the word go out of him because the enemy just took it away hey met somebody then he said those that fall on the rock they are those that hear the word of god is the the the, the 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 parable is in verse 5 of that matthew 13 and 6 verses 5 and 6 but where he gave us this the meaning of the parable it is in verse 20 and 21 that those that fell on the rock they are they are the the, the children of god that are listening to the word of god initially they they accepted it but are more as they come to the house of god or they are watching it from the telly or from the crusade wherever they hear the word of god instead of them to use that word to correct their mistakes to move on with their lives they started picking errors from the west that is coming out from the men of god from the telling they are hearing from wherever they are listening amen somebody so they did not allow the word to have root in them because of this the bible say the word the, the that word fell out of them because they are now complaining different excuses seeing errors in what the man of god women of god are giving them they are complaining like some people today they are saying the man of god is an arm robber many churches are stealing some are making love with women married women to be precise some are stealing they started giving pretty excuses they are forgotten that salvation is personal they are forgotten that the book of you know ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 says that if we see such people we need to fill that gap for god and began to intercede for them no we are not doing this so because of this those that fell on the rock they are categorized to this kind of set of people that you know they count on an error they are there to see excuses 50 excuses from the children of god they now said they are the god of themselves they are now become the deity but the bible say because of this the world did not have a way to have a root in them so the word of god go out of them amen the third one is verse 8 and 9 i'm just doing a summary i want to lay more emphasis this is why this is the part two but i gave it another you know topic which i titled yielding yourself fully to the principles of god but these people did not yield themselves they started using their own mindset worldly mind you know to be seen error in the things of god instead of them to follow the principles of god to yield themselves and began to obey and stand on the word if even though they see error in people's life they're supposed to pray for them for those yoke in them to be broken but rather the bible says they began to use this as an excuses not to serve god they are waving the word away out of their heart they did not allowed pay attention to the word of god so the word did not have a root in them the word go away the third one is those that fell on the tongues in the book of matthew chapter 13 if you read from verses 8 and 9 if you jump to 23 that is where the jesus gave the interpretation the meaning of those that fell on the tongues he said categorize them to those people that you know the after riches material things today we are doing comparison in the house of god they want to go and show up they are there to show all the way instead of them to seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness instead of them to go there to focus on what they are there for to serve god they are now after material things many men of god if you see giving an example of today if they see this man of god bought a plane they then say want to find all means to buy a plane 
Amen, somebody. So they are the one categorized to those, you know, that fall on the tongues. The tongue chose them. Those things took them out, out of, out of uh, making them not to, you know, strong in the things of God. They are serving material things. They not take that as their idol, as their God. Amen, somebody. But the area I want to stand on this time, the area I want to come at is, you know, those that fell on the good soil. The Bible says, though we are the children of God, that hear the word of God and they understood it. I've given it before in my part one. These people, they hear the word of God, they understood it. But Jesus went further to say, score 30 among these people, brethren that score that hear the word and they have from genesis to revelation of the scripture they understood everything he said but some score 100 over 100 some score 60 over 100 some score 30 over 100 so the reason why i came up with this exhortation is that why did they score 30 amen somebody the holy spirit went further to interpret to me began to explain to me that is why i came up with this second episode of this uh, topic amen somebody that many of all we know the word of god yes we understood it but we are not standing on the obedience side to fulfill everything god asks us to do that is why we are scoring 30. some of the examples as i initially said last time this is another example we have seen in the beginning in the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 4 that the one that fell on the roadside, this had referred to the children of God that hear the word of God. They did not understand it. You as a child of God who have an understanding of the word of God, who know the purpose of God in your life because the word of God is for you to use it to bless others. It is not for yourself. Amen. The Holy Spirit that is in you, it is in you for you to help to help others. It's helping you to bless others. Amen. If somebody is in your denomination, he's not having the word of God in him, through his conformment, through the way he behaves, you will know that he's a church goer. The word is not in him. The Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. That is why Jesus gave this parable that those that fell on the roadside, they are the one that hear the word of God, they did not understand it. You who have the word of God in you, who you who know what God says about you, that Jesus came all the way from heaven to teach you the way, to teach you everything, the way God said, this is how my principles will be. When you observe, you have that spirit of desirement. That is why the Bible says they hear the word of God. They understood it. You who have the word of God in you, you know from beginning to the end of the word of God. You have seen examples, clear examples, because God has given you that power, that spirit. You have, you know, a spiritual eye to observe, to, to see that those people, the word of God is not in them. Because from the way they are behaving, some people, they go to church. They always come to church. They are still doing this prostitute. It is your... It is in your position to go closer to them, to see why they are doing those things for you to give them a happy hand. Something that will make them not to do those things again. Amen, somebody. Is it document they are not having? Are they having documents or there is no job? Many of us, we don't have a home to sleep. Many of us, we are sick. We don't have money to buy medicine. But yet, many of us that are having this money, we are in the congregation. We are in the same denomination with those people that are coming to the house of God because of one thing and another that is distracting their attention, that is making them not to pay attention to the word of God, making them not to give their heart to the word of God. You who are opportune, having document, having job to do, you are having the word of God in you. The Bible says because you did not go to seek, you know, to help these people out, making them closer with their hearts to come we need their heart back to Christ. Because of this, you are scoring 30. Amen, somebody. You may say, I am not quarreling with somebody. I did not offend somebody. Yes, you did not quarrel. You are not gossiping. You are not bite biting. But sometimes you are stingy. You are not opening your hand. You have the time, the talent to help somebody. To make sure you cure that sickness as of that person because those potentials are in you as a child of God. The Bible said they hear the word of God, they understood it, but yet some score 30. Then I began to ask the Holy Spirit, why? And now he now went further to tell me, many of them are in this church. They have the word of God, they hear the word, the word of God is not entering them because they did not pay attention to the word. They did not give their heart to the word to enter. So you as a child of God that have the word of God in you, you who have everything in you, those potentials are in you, you have a spiritual eye, you have the spirit of discernment. The Bible says if you refuse to help, 
your brother to win their hearts to Christ. Because the Bible said the, 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 that, that uh, potentials that God has put in us is for we to win souls back to Christ. They may be inside the house of God. You may say, if I talk to them, and they will insult you. Brothers and sisters in the, the, in the Lord. The Bible says, the kingdom of God suffering violence, and the violent took it by force. It is your portion and my portion to make sure such people that are coming to the house of God, that are bringing strength to heaven, that are, you know, not bringing glory to, to, to the kingdom of God, we are there to ask what is wrong with them. We are there to, to see why they are behaving like that. Amen, somebody. That is why some of us, our marks, I'm here to encourage us. We are scoring 30. This is time for you to go on fasting and praying as a child of God. You need to kneel down and ask in fasting and praying the Holy Spirit. Which area you are falling. Amen. Falling is not the problem. But for you to realize you are falling, that you are falling. And make an amendment on how to stand on your feet. Many people today, they are dying anyhow. We who have the word of God in us, we are so stingy. And, and that word we are having is not for us. It's for God, from God Almighty. Amen, somebody. Anything we think we are doing, it is not by our power. It's through the help of the Holy Spirit that God has imparted in us. Why can't we use it to bless others? When we see people, errors in people's life. People are not opening their heart for the world to enter. You need to go closer to them. Maybe they are in need of something. God are putting it in you. God have given you those things for you to use to take care of people. I know many people will not like this topic, but I'm here to say the truth. The Bible says when you know the truth and you say the truth, the truth will set you free. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, be your brother's keeper. The Bible says we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Many people today, they are wily in sin, they are dying in sin. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, 16, it says God sent prophet Ezekiel to go and tell the, Israel of, or the children of Israelites of those days that when they are going astray, they are doing things that is not pleasing to the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, Spirit that is in them. If you who know, see the error in them, and you know it is an error, you did not correct it. He said their blood will be upon you. If they die as a sinner, their blood will be upon you. But if you tell them, you correct them, yet they did not hearken to your voice, your hand is clean. If they die, they will use their head to carry their own blood. Amen, somebody. That quotation is from uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, from verses 16 to 20. You can see them there. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, one word of God is enough for the wife. I don't know why you are scoring 30. I don't know why we are scoring 30. Many of us are still scoring 30. But we think we are the Alpha and Omega. We are the Abbey Shop. We are the professors in the, in the things of God. We are the pastors. You know, we are the ushers. We are in the singing choir department. But I'm here to encourage us. There are so many things we're supposed to do as a child of God that we are not doing. We may think we have a past man. That day of rapture will be among the ones that God will take along. After those that have died in Christ have resurrected, we are the one that will, you know, vanish and go and meet them on the air and go to heaven. But I'm here to tell you, there are so many things you need to be asking the Holy Spirit to direct you. He's your teacher. He's your director. He will tell you what you are lacking. I know he said every stubborn heart in us, he will remove it. But believe, believe me, if you did not ask him to remove those things, he might not. Many of us have a stubborn spirit. We know the word, but yet we know the truth. Instead of us to use the truth so that the truth can set us free, we are not using it. Many people, they are wildly in sin. Many are dying. We are not paying attention. We are not, we are not showing concern. We are saying, are they not going to the same church? Can they read the Bible on their own? But I'm here to tell you, when you see your brother wildly in sin, you need to correct that person. You need to use a good speech, a humble character, to, to a humble way. To speak to that person. If that person is lacking something that is causing that person to do things that will make him or her to make her, you as a child of God, that God are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, with that, that spirit of, you know, having the spirit of discernment, you know all these things. As a child of God, this is an error in this person's life. You need to go closer to that person. You need to go and make friends with that person before it is too late. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, remember in the book of Jonah, when God sent Jonah to Nineveh to go and deliver the children of God that are there, those days of time of Jonah, days of Jonah, the Bible says Jonah refused. What happened? God made Jonah to fall into a sea and the fish swallowed Jonah. Until Jonah knelt down and, and, and begged for forgiveness. And before God allowed the, the fish to vomit Jonah 
out of his belly. Amen, somebody. But I'm here to use this little word of exhortation to encourage us. I don't know whom you are. Are you a child of God? Do you have the word of God in you? What are you doing about those that say they are children of God? The word of God is not in them. Because if that word is in you, you have to submit to that word through the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you so that it can direct your path. But you call yourself a child of God. Things that you are doing, they are far different from the constitution of God. Amen, somebody. Are you a child of God? Are you studying the Bible to know what God says about you? How you will live your life? If you are not started doing that, you need to start and um, start reading the scripture. That is where we see the constitution of God. The way God said we should live, all is written in the scripture. Use it, brothers and sisters, you who have the word of God in you. Use it to bless somebody else. Those that have the word of God, that are listening, that the word is not entering there. Something is causing them not to pay attention. It is that thing you have to go and meet them to see. Why is it that you say you are a child of God, but yet... There is no good example to be counted about you. So you need to go closer to them to see what is wrong with them so that in the end, you begin to see the glory of God upon those people. And God will bless you abundantly. And you will see your mark will live from 30 to 80, not even 60. Amen, somebody. This is the little word of exhortation that the Holy Spirit are putting in me to come and use to, 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 to encourage us. To let us know in case we don't know. We have seen in the scripture in the book of Acts of Apostles, a man called Cornelius. The Bible said because he was doing good, he received a divine visitation. Have you visited him? Do good. Love people. Don't use that to throw away people. Amen, somebody. Like here we are now in Verona. There are so many people that cross through Libya. Hallelujah. I know most of them, they are not your biological family. You don't know them. They are from Africa. Anywhere you see, they greet them. Ask them where they are living. Find out what is wrong with them. If there is a little help, you can help. If it is to direct them, some of them have documents. They don't know where to go from their left to right. Help them. If you don't help them, they might go and end up in carrying drugs. But by the time you help them, take them to where they are looking for a job. They might be lucky. You will encourage them. If you have things, little food, fruit, give them. Amen, somebody. Make friends with them. Send messages to them in WhatsApp. Bless them with word of prayer, word of encouragement. Amen, somebody. You will see, they will be happy. That thing that will make them to block their mind, their ear, not to hack into the voice of God that is speaking to them. The more you go closer to them, the more they will be free. Amen, somebody. It will not make them to go to those zones that will take their life and make them to make air. You have win a soul. You have delivered them from that predicament. Amen, somebody. By so doing, your mark will be going high. Listen to the word. He said, those that hear the word of God, in the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, the interpretation, he said, they are the ones that hear the, those that fell on the roadside. They categorize to those group of Christians that hear the word of God and they, and they understand it. They understood everything I, 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 I want to say in one word. So if they have an understanding of the word, yeah, they score 30. That means they are not applying everything they understood. So we need to know all these areas well. Amen. Let us love our neighbor as ourselves. Many people are wildly in sin. Many are dying. We are not interested. If you are opportune to help one or two or three people, let us do so, so that we can see the glory of God upon our lives. I don't know why you people are scoring 30. The Bible said they hear the word of God. They understood it. They did not say they understand some. Everything in the world, they know it. If they can score it, that means they are not applying all they understood. We need to be effective in this area as well. Let us love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us see those that are falling. Let us encourage them with the word of God. Let us draw them closer to ourselves so that their soul will not perish. This hour, I want to let you know that God loves you. He loves you. He did not hate you. If you score 30, it does not mean God hates you. But he wants you to realize where you are falling so that you can amend it and stand on your feet again. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, a word, one word of God is enough for the wise. I want you to take the scripture. Go and read this book of Matthew chapter 13. Read from one to end. You will see all these things I'm saying. Go back to the book of that Ezekiel chapter 3. Read it from verses 15 or 16 to 20. All these things are there. Do it. When you are not doing all these things, don't be surprised. That day of judgment, you see yourself having 30 instead of having 60 or 70. 
I pray for you this hour. As you hear this one word of God, may you not be among those that have the understanding of the word of God. And yes, God 30. I decree and I declare in your life this hour that as you hear this one word of God, I decree that this word will correct every mistake that you have been making in the mighty name of Jesus. That stubborn spirit that is in you, that spirit that is stingy, that I don't care spirit that you are having as a child of God, know that you don't have the, the, the knowledge of whom God is, but you are not applying them fully. I command such a yoke to be broken out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I say receive the grace to move ahead and to score a higher mark in the name of Jesus. I decree that the Holy Spirit henceforth will be teaching you, directing your path in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, may God Almighty bless this word in your heart, and you will never be the same again as you stand on it and begin to apply them. For in Jesus' almighty name I have prayed. Viewers all over the world, wherever you are watching me from, I don't believe you say, if you do this, God will bless you. But I want you to have the word of God in you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 81, it said you, if you are hungry, he said open your mouth, he will feed you. I want you to tell God that you are hungry of him. I want you to tell God to open your understanding. I want you to tell God to give you the spirit of discernment. I want you to tell God in your prayer that God should open your spiritual eye. God should direct your path through the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. So that at the end of that time of judgment, that day that rapture will happen, or maybe you die, and rapture happen, happen to occur after you might have died, depends that God Almighty will choose you among those that will be going to stay with him there in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want you to say the scriptures. I want you to read this Matthew chapter 13 very well. Look at what happened to those that have the word of God in them. Yet it's called 30. Just because they were not standing, yielding themselves fully to the principles of those things that they have in them. Amen, somebody. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want to leave you here. Go and rewind it. Read the scripture. Say the scripture. And as you do, God will richly bless you. I don't want you to miss heaven. Because when one miss heaven, hell is there for a person. Including me. I pray for myself the way I pray for you people. That God Almighty will teach us through the Holy Spirit that he put in us. So that that faithful day, we will not miss heaven. We will make heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. I say share this video clip when you see it in the YouTube in a WhatsApp and in the Facebook and also in the Messenger. I want you to help me to share it so that as you do, you are also doing the work of evangelists and God will richly bless you and multiply you and give you all your heart desire in the mighty name of Jesus. I say remain blessed until I come your way again. Bye bye for now. For in Jesus' almighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah.